What is going on, FA Nation? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm LOD DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show. We are looking at the Wednesday early seven game main slate of fresh off of a wild MLB trade deadline, which saw a lot of notable names flop teams, some not notable names stay where they were. Uh, you know, so it should be pretty interesting moving forward uh, when it comes to how we go about the DFS landscapes uh but for this slate in particular um uh, you know not too bad again seven games chris sale is your top priced starting pitcher here taj bradley checking in at ninety five hundred dollars against a miami marlins team that uh they traded i think it was someone said they traded nine of the 25 guys that were in their clubhouse today or something like that so uh, a lot of movement there baltimore made a whole bunch of trades uh, they're on this slate. They got Eloy Jimenez, and uh, just to name a to name a few uh, moves that they made here today. Um, so should be should be interesting. Uh, how you uh, feeling coming out of the deadline here, James? Um, well, Jazz Chisholm's really good, so I feel pretty good. Who? Jazz Chisholm. Yeah, well, you know, as a Yankee fan, you homered again, so you, know, you got that going for you. Yeah, so I I feel pretty good. Uh, Yankees on this slate. They're on the road in Philadelphia here. Uh, lefty on the mound, though, for uh, for Philly. So we'll see if Jazz is neutralized or not. Nestor Cortez, still a Yankee, was potentially rumored to not be a Yankee at times during the trade deadline. On the road, we'll see how that plays out this, this go around here. Uh, Chris Sale versus Milwaukee. Bradley versus uh, Miami. Grayson Rodriguez against Toronto. Freddie Peralta against Atlanta, your top four. Price starting pitching here. Uh, Taj, for sure. Smash chalk spot for, for I imagine, the slate here. Uh, but are you spending the 10-5 on Chris Sale? I don't think he, you'd be unhappy if you did. Um, he, despite the team not like scoring a lot of runs, wins a lot of games, he misses a lot of bats against teams that don't typically strike out and are good against left-handed pitching. Um, I guess... Other than San Diego start, but 79 pitches. That was a start before the all-star break. Uh, didn't really go deep into that game, but in Arizona, nine strikeouts, their elite against lefties out of the break against the Mets as good as it gets against lefties, seven and a third, nine strikeouts. So um, Chris Hale has, as has as high a ceiling as anyone. Um, I don't think you can necessarily go wrong with any pitcher above nine K on this slate sales elite. Bradley's obviously been, you know, at least over the last month, maybe there's a case for him to be the best pitcher in baseball. I mean, just statistically, I don't think he has you know, a what would what we say it was an 076 ERA or something like that over the last 10 starts. Yeah, I think it's yeah, um, it's definitely below one. Yeah, uh, but I mean, he's allowed one earned run in five starts, so mm. hasn't allowed more than two starts and er, earned runs in any start. Yeah, June first, May eighth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, June eighth. It's just he's has been he's been as good as anyone. Now Miami's offense has been good. Obviously, they traded everybody. Yeah, so that will hurt. Um, Bradley's as as great as it's going to be. I'm okay getting to Grayson. I think at times the fly balls and the strikeouts evade him. And that hurts. We've seen two of the last three starts less than 10 yeah. fantasy points. The three starts surrounding that, though, 26, 22, 30 fantasy points. Toronto, not a really a high strikeout offense. Uh, and then Freddie Peralta, who is uh, very, very inconsistent. But he gets a Braves offense that doesn't hit right-handed pitching well. So I think there's a really high ceiling for Peralta when it comes to strikeouts. There's also like a negative five fantasy point ceiling for Freddie Peralta. We'll see when... Maurice Hilaire is incorporated. We'll see like what that Braves lineup looks like as a when they're more whole. But um, as of right now, I, I'm still interested even with Solaire in Peralta at 9,000. For sure. Um, going down into the mid-tier under 9K. Uh, we were in on Brady Singer the other day. He did not disappoint. Seven shutout, five strikeouts here. Only a $100 price increase. Gets a White Sox team who he just pitched seven shutout with seven strikeouts against. Uh, $8,200 Brady Singer kind of lock and load for me in this range. Yeah, I mean, I think Pablo Lopez is in play as well. 
I have been team Papa Lopez is going to regress positively going forward. Yeah. Has been the case out of the break. Um, and the strikeouts are back. So I, I would include him in that mix. He'll be lesser owned than Brady Singer. Brady Singer is going to be the most popular pitcher on the slate. There almost don't, no reason that he's 8,200 with the White Sox in play here. Yeah. Um, back to back scoreless outings, one including the White Sox. So, He'll be the most popular play on the slate. Be contrarian and Pablo Lopez is fine. Yeah, 100 percent here. Um, anybody else in this range uh below them? Obviously, you have Severino, Sanchez, uh McGreevy here at 7K making a debut, uh going up against Texas, Heaney on the other side. Um, any any thoughts in this uh value tier? Um, I mean, I'm okay with Severino. Minnesota's offense is obviously cooled off a little bit they haven't cooled against righties that's where i guess i would be a little hesitant um 833 team ops in july is a little scary so sure and eh. um sanchez i would say the one thing that could harm sanchez is the strikeouts or the lack thereof at times so 7200 for sanchez is fine uh just because of quality of pitcher mm-hmm. i think the mcgreevy play is a little bit interesting um like Texas in July, 24% strikeout rate, but an 830 team OPS. That's sixth in baseball. Um, oh, he's a righty. What am I saying? Sorry. Yeah. Um this is the this is the split that Texas has struggled with. Uh, I don't know why I just thought he was lefty. Um yeah, I mean McGreevy making his debut is a little yeah, 2021 bit. first round pick, not not a top hundred prospect. Um, has had some issues at AAA this year. Not a big strikeout guy either, which maybe is a bit concerning. Um, you know, under 8K per nine, pretty much for most of his minor league career here. So, um, you know, home ballpark helps. Rangers, you know, the Rangers' new lineup is kind of interesting, right? Like, we finally got their full lineup, Josh Jung. They left Josh Lowe as their lead, or not Lowe, Josh um, Smith yeah. as their leadoff hitter. So, I mean, it's now hitting third. So, they're, kind of breaking up their lineup there. So uh, kind of interesting to see how that plays. Um, anything on Heaney, Rodriguez, Thorpe obviously blew up last time out. And then we got Rodri Munoz there. Yeah, I don't think Rodriguez is going to pitch. I don't think that's – I think that's a DraftKings error. He okay. just pitched like two days ago, and he, I know he only made it one inning. Yeah. Um, But I don't think like two days later he's going to pitch again. Sure. I was looking at fan graphs – um earlier i think this is jake bloss i think that he's going to make his debut for the okay. for the which Blues. you were obviously all about stacking against him the other day but um, then again now i'm looking now i'm looking and they do fangraphs does have yariel rodriguez which is crazy but i guess when you only go one third of an inning and throw 40 pitches <laughs> right. i guess that's like you use that as like a bullpen sure. um We'll see. It, we'll see if it's Rodriguez. We'll see if it's Bloss post. Either way, it's against Baltimore. It's so. a it's a good spot. Yeah, it's a good spot um, for the bats. For the bats. Uh, yeah, for I the agree. bats. So. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to catcher here again. Seven game slate. We generally look for some value uh, if we can find it. Uh, again, I think going against McGreevy probably would make some sense here, uh, given his inability to miss bats at the minor league level. Uh, you got to pitch a contact at the major league level. You better have some uh, ability to get soft contact. So uh, whether it be Jonah Heim or the newly acquired Carson Kelly, fine going in, in that direction there. Again, it, Freddie Furman, if he's in the lineup at 3,200 against Thorpe, happy to plug that one in there as well. Yeah, I mean, only thing I would probably mention in terms of like spend ups is Wilson Contreras because he's been good against lefties. Mm-hmm. JT Ramuto 44 because Nestor stinks. Um and that would probably be the end of like anything above 4K for me and then all the value plays even. Sure. Agreed with you. Um I guess you got Roydvert in there potentially so against Munoz could be a guy 3K. So yeah the lefties uh, the lefties have that's been the Munoz yeah been the uh, Munoz trouble player. spot so could be could get a, a look at him. Uh at first base uh we have Harper against Cortez over the top lefty lefty uh, Lonzo, Vladdy, whoever, and, uh, against Grayson, rather. Vladdy's been on a tear uh, again of late here. Um, are you looking to spend up, or do we go back to the Royals here and just keep pegging Thorpe? 
I mean, it's undeniable how good like Vlad is. Like this is as this is like MVP Vlad is back, yeah. right? Over the last month, definitely. two months. So you can definitely play him because at fifty one hundred, if MVP Vlad is the guy showing up, he's a thousand dollars too cheap. Like he's sick. He's a six K player. That form of this firm of Vlad is like a six K player. So yeah. um, I know Grayson's good, but uh, he does allow a lot of fly balls, and Vladdy is hitting a lot of home runs. So I, I think that that play correlates. Um, yeah, I mean the KC guys are are incredibly interesting. I, we talked about it. Like Thorpe was bound to blow up. Like that was written in the stars. And not that Kansas City's offense is like super elite, but it is very good in the middle, right? Like after they can't they can't figure out the leadoff, but then Wit. Pasquantino, Salvi, Renfro, Furman, MJ. Like that that is a like good middle of the lineup. Um I, I'd play either Casey uh first baseman here. Sure. Goldschmidt's been a little bit better of late. If you want to play him in the split advantage, I have no problem. Um so yeah. yeah Miranda I, against Severino, 4500? Yeah, Miranda. I mean, he came back. After getting hit in the head, obviously he hit fourth on the Tuesday slate. Has been just we've talked about it ad nauseum, right? Nobody, the twins weren't listening. Nobody was listening to us when we would say, "Hey, Jose Miranda against right-handed pitching is the is the sweet spot," and mm-hmm. uh, that is certainly still the case. Yep, agreed. Uh, working our way down into some value. Uh, anybody uh, that you're looking to necessarily build some lineups around here? Um, again, into a smaller slate, so the player pool is a bit uh, depressed. We do have Nathaniel Lowe at $3,700. Uh, maybe he finds himself being a target of yours. I would say both Baltimore guys would be interesting to me, depending on who's in the lineup. Uh, sure. Nathaniel Lowe has been has surely been better um, for multi-hit games over his last six. I also like McGreevy on the other side, so uh, I'm a little indifferent on both, like, playing versus not playing him. Um, Mm -hmm. But obviously the price is super good. Yeah, price price is what kind of plays for me as well. Any other value first baseman for you? No. Uh, Moving on over to second base, and uh, I guess this would be uh, interesting. I don't know if you saw the notification as I did, but Jackson Holiday recalled yep so uh we'll see whether or not he is in his game this game here but he is 3k um gets him against whomever is going to be uh pitching for toronto in that one so i'll be curious to see if he's starting and where he uh where maybe some of the ownership would be on him um obviously up at the top Semyon, westberg castro you know you've been in on brandon L- uh, low a lot lately lefty power against munoz at 45 like where are you looking to start things yeah, I mean, definitely interesting at the top. I say this when we play when we talk Baltimore all the time about Jordan Westberg. Um, the last time I said it, he homered, and I think like this is another spot where Baltimore is going to likely get a lot of ownership, and forty eight hundred dollars Jordan Westberg is just going to fly under the radar because mm-hmm. he does all the time, and he's been homering a lot, extra base hits plenty, hits directly in the middle of this lineup between like the plays that are more popular, right? So if you want to get a loan piece of Baltimore, it's always Jordan Westberg. Brandon Lau has been amazing, dude. Um, power, even solo base the other day, had a four hit game, extra base hits every single game, every day. There's an extra base hit attached to Brandon Lau's name. Um, this is a guy who hit 40 bombs in a year in like the worst ballpark in major league right. baseball for home runs. So yeah. there's obviously when he's going good, there's obvious pop in his bat. And that's what this this spot is. Like he's probably my favorite second baseman um, over 4K. Sure. Obviously, like you mentioned, Holiday. Like Mateo is hurt. They traded Norby. Yep. He's probably their starting second baseman until Mateo comes back, and then like yeah. we'll see, right? And it's like yeah. it's like if he if just he's three for thirty hitting, again, yeah, you know, like he's out. If he's not, he's in. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it's like that's exactly it. Because like, are you gonna not? You're not gonna go with Jackson Holiday if he's like hitting. Like that's right. the number one prospect in baseball. Like that's so. Um, I don't think it's like a very. I need to think hard about this position. I think it's like pretty. 
cut and dry. You're playing Baltimore or like Brandon Lau in the mid tier here. Um, I mean, Tampa Bay, no shortage of plays here. They also have Richie Palacios. Sure. Yep. Got him in the outfield, so you could ultimately just play them both, but he had been leading off. Yep. Um, you know, lefty against Munoz there has some options uh, for us. Uh, probably it for me, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't um, – like, Oswaldo Cabrera has been pretty good. If he's in the lineup, he's he hits better from the right side of the plate for the mm. Yankees. But again, like – we talk about this all the time when Chris Sanchez is on the mound. Do you want to, if there is every test on hitting a home run against Christopher Sanchez, it's probably Aaron judge, but like right. outside of Aaron judge, do you want to like stack Yankees? Right. I mean, it's, it's really hard to pick, pick on someone who doesn't allow any power. I agree. A hundred percent. Hard to get to the upside there. So uh, third base brings us to Royce Lewis against Severino 53 Boom. Against Cortez, $5,200 there. Uh, Riley, you have Vladdy with the third base eligibility. Chaz Chisel now, third base eligibility, lefty lefty spot against Sanchez at 5K. Um, Alec Bohm, probably the, the, the one choice here. Yeah. Yep. yep, yep. Uh, not a ton of RBIs lately for Alec Bohm. Which is weird, one, was... one of his last like 30 games, 20 games here. Well, we last time we did this, we. We talked it into existence with um, Tyler O'Neill, right? It wasn't it? There wasn't a lot of RBIs, and then Tyler O'Neill like went on like an RBI binge. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll talk it into existence here with both. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, Josh Young, quick price increase. He went from 4K to 4,500. Uh, I know you're maybe in on McGreevy here. Um, I don't mind Josh Young at 45. I talked about Miranda and Smith in that range as well. Anybody else for you at third base? Um, I mean, Arenado at $4,000 against a lefty is fine. Okay. Christopher Morel homered in his debut with the Rays. If you want to, if you're interested in a Rays stack, Morel, the, the Morel edition is obviously not going to help the uh, old strikeout rate for Tampa Bay there. <laughs> no. A team that strikes out a lot against righties to begin with. And now they add him, mm -hmm. but we know like the type of stretches that he can go on. I mean, you and Howard are like, the perfect. I mean, the homer tonight. If he homers tomorrow, then we just play him yeah. to stop homering. So. Yeah, I mean, and and this would. I mean, this is a spot to play him in if you want. If you think he's going to homer, Roderick Munoz. I know it's mostly the lefties, but he just yeah. allows a lot of power. So, yeah. um, Morel and and Arenado in, in tournaments, I think, are definitely. Sure. Uh, Caballero again uh, has some stolen base upside. Three stolen bases last ten games. If he finds a way to get on first, we know what he can do there. Um, Paul DeYoung revenge already from right away. Think they throw him in there at 3K, dude. He hits righties. I'm saying, like, this is the spot, right? Like, revenge game right away, power against a bad. Did you pitcher. see he's second on the Royals already in home runs? <laughs> I mean, that's not probably surprising. Bobby Witt has 19 and he has 18. That's, um, I like it. I, I don't like Thorpe has not looked good against coherent offenses and i would young is hitting somewhere like in the top half of that lineup you'd have to consider him i think you probably just consider him yeah. right because he's a righty against a guy that just coming off a start that was inevitable and like it's not like after the start the numbers got any better they're no they're bad so um i'd be good with him yeah okay. whether he's hitting eighth or fifth okay uh shortstop uh, speaking of Bobby Witt, sixty-four hundred dollars. Gunnar Henderson, sixty-two. Trey Turner, six K. Lindor, Seager, your top five guys. Yeah, it's sick. That's sick. That's just sick. pick. You can only pick one. You know, um, it's unfortunate. I mean, like, there's obviously every time you think Bobby Witt is like going to fall off, and then he has a four-hit game with a grand slam that wins them, and then makes like the sickest play in the hole to to actually right. ice the game um and is i mean him and aaron judge have just been better than every other player on the planet every single night it, hard not to pick wit um also hard not to get to gunner he's heating up a little bit hitting like every game he's played lately trey turner has slowed down a little bit but he gets a really good matchup against nestor on the road pablo lopez has been great. He also allows a lot of home runs. Mm -hmm. Lindor hits a lot of home runs. So 
and then Seager gets McGreevy in his debut, I'm I'm sure Corey Seager is okay with uh, greeting a, a rookie here. So I, I'm good with all five. I probably have them ranked as they're priced, which is boring, but I think that's just how it would Yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on probably your, uh, your stack, right? Like yep. whatever team you're playing, you're playing that shortstop here. So. Yep. Uh, Mason Wynn, $4,200 against a lefty. I think he homered the last time we had this spot for him. He also homered uh, this evening. Yeah, so happy to uh, happy to continue to plug that one at 42. Um, wonder, wondering whenever Junior Caminero will get called up. Yeah, I thought it might I was wondering that. I was actually wondering that at third. As well. yeah, I, was just, I have him in uh, FSGA. You have him everywhere as well. I'm just curious. Thought today might have been the day. Didn't happen. I somehow didn't trade Yandy Diaz. I already thought he was going to go. Um, any value shortstops? De Young. Yeah, De Young, yeah. All right, outfield. Judge, 65. Soto, 61. Top two guys there. Schwarber, who hits lefties pretty well for power. Cortez, 55. Santander hits everybody at 53. Uh, thoughts spending up at the position. I mean, it's it's... Obviously, I think really hard to want to get to Judge or Soto. I think if you're going to play one, I think you just play one. I don't think you can like because it's just there's just a lack of power. Philly obviously greatly improved their bullpen as well um, at the deadline. So once Sanchez is out of this game, it's a tough it's a tough bullpen. But like Judge has a gazillion home runs. I mean, he might if he homers. Tonight or tomorrow, he has 40 before right. August, which is not fair. So I would say Judge would be like the preferred spend. Obviously, you, you mentioned the Schwar- the Schwarber thing. Also, I'm not afraid of playing Ozuna. He's in one of those power surges as well. Freddie Peralta is good, but Freddie Peralta also gives up a lot of power. So yeah. Ozuna, Santander, another guy who's just hitting homering every night, homered on Tuesday again. Have to assume... That's going to be live again on on Wednesday. Um, so, I mean, there's I, I'd be fine with any of the top guys. Probably Schwarber, Santander as my top two options. Sure. Uh, working our way down under the 5K range. Uh, you have Nimmo at 49, uh, which is certainly something I'd be looking at. Stanton is back. He's $4,600. Uh, Bucks in 48 in that range as well has been pretty good. Um Castellanos, 42. Langford, 42. Pretty good range in this run. Yeah, we'll hope maybe we'll find out um, if there's any life news going on at t- before 1230 tomorrow. I'll let you know yeah. on the Castellanos front. Uh, TBD on that one. Any um, world events happen? Yeah. yeah, any world events we'll we'll see. Um, uh, Josh Lowe here, 4,100. He's kind of slowed down drastically. Yeah. You know who hasn't slowed down? You know who's actually been amazing? Colton Kowser has yeah. been incredible. Baltimore's, embar- Baltimore's embarrassing with the amount of riches Just, they have. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why like, I I was shocked to see the trade that they made, um, giving up Norby and um, Stowers. Yeah. But for, for Trevor Rogers, obviously, like, interesting deal, but then you're like, yeah. I mean, they can do that because they still have 77 prospects um, available to them. Kowser, I don't know if he's ever going to leave, leave the leadoff position uh, with how well he's hit. Um, so yeah. you get Kowser at the top, another two-hit game. Uh, he's working on another two-hit game on the uh, Tuesday slate. I think at 4K, he makes a lot of sense. Kelnick can't hit anymore. Uh, Winker, if you want a home run, Kepler is fine. Where's Austin Hayes? Where's Austin Hayes at? Austin Hayes is cheap. Uh, he Where is, is he? Cheap. There he is. Twenty nine hundred against Nestor hits lefties. Homer the other day or homer today? today? Yeah, homer today. today. Yeah. Um, I, I like that a lot. Twenty nine hundred bucks. Me too. That's a that's a really good plug. That's like probably close to auto plug, considering how good he's been against lefties. Yeah. Um. For sure, um, a little higher. Uh, I would love to play Chorio here. 
Melendez, 31 against yep. four. He's been great. He homered the other night when we, we gave him a shout. Yeah, I can't get, can't get the Torio against Sale. Yeah, it sinks. Um, I would play Renfro, 36. He's on a little bit of a heater right now. Um, Kansas City is going to be really popular from Jump Street. They're going to have a great team total. They're going to be uh, one of my favorite stacks. Of the game. Sure. All right, let's get a lineup build here. I think Hayes has to be a plug-in. He does. I think that feels good. Um, all right, pitching wise, uh, Taj for sure. Yeah, Singer, Taj Singer. Yep, I'm with you there. Catcher, maybe you're s- settling in mid tier. Berman, yeah, Marchand. If he's uh, is he back in triple A, he's back in triple A. It sucks. First base, um, what are we liking here? So what are we trying to spend up for, I guess, is the question. What's our number one spend? Probably wit. Wit. All right. Right? Prob- yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's fine. So we do wit. Um second base. Let's see if we get low. Third base. Do we have a cheap third base in? De Young. De Young. I, I'm not gonna say no to Kansas City at all. I know. That's what I'm saying. So 41 for three spots. One of the outfield spots probably occupied for Renfro or Melendez. Melendez, yeah. 46. Uh, I mean, you could just play Vladdy and then go like Kowser. You're like 4K, you get your Baltimore exposure. That works. Bradley, Singer, Furman, Guerrero, Low. Uh, are Lau, De Jong, Witt, Hayes, Melendez, and Kowser. Royal stacking uh, here with some power bats around it with Bradley and Singer as our two starting pitchers. Uh, we'll be back for the 5 p.m. live show uh, to break down the five-game main slate, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, have any questions, get us in the Discord. Find us on Twitter, and we'll catch you later.